Welcome back, Rankers. Question on the Facebook page today, and you too can ask any questions of SEO that you like, or anything else for that matter. I don't pretend I'll know the answers to, to all of them, but uh, I may make something up that's quite interesting. You can ask a question on facebook.com forward slash Melbourne SEO. Michelle Bowden today has asked, uh, what sorts of keywords should we use to rank for presentation skills training in Sydney and Australia? Well, you'd need to use the words presentation skills training in Sydney and Australia. <laughs> However, I know that sounds like a smart-ass comment, but it is very difficult to try to start the ball rolling by asking people what you should be ranking for without actually using the keywords. The common question that I would start with when you're asking, asking family and friends and, and maybe clients is, if you were looking for products or services like ours, what sorts of things would you type into Google to find them? So you ask the question totally devoid of key phrases, because as soon as you put key phrases in there, you're going to influence the response. And I think that's one of the best places to start, because quite often you'll be too close to the argument, and you will have preconceived ideas of what people are typing in. And to, to give you a for instance of that, jargon is an absolute killer when it comes to keyword analysis and keyword ranking. We had one client who said to me, ah, oh, Jim, I want to rank for EVP. And I said, EVP? What's EVP? And he said, oh, it's an acronym. It's uh, Employee Value Proposition. Wow. Um, the the uh, Don't use jargon. No one's going to type employee value proposition in. And to give you an idea who, what people are looking for when they're typing in EVP, is they're typing in for EV, EVP ghost, EVP recordings, white noise, EVP white noise, EVP recorder, and all these other paranormal related phrases. That's because there's a, uh, a movie back here where you can see the spike in about 2004, 2005, with Michael Keaton, excellent film, called White Noise, and EVP stood for Electronic Voice Phenomena, not Employee Value Proposition. In fact, if you type then Employee Value Proposition, it's flatlining, nothing there, nothing, 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 nothing at all. So, keep away from jargon. Ask other people first, even on Twitter, but ask it without the actual keywords in it. Crowdsource that information. And then once you have that, and I'm going to start today with presentation skills, go to Google Insights for Search. Oh, here's something that you may not have known about Google Insights for Search. And the reason I use Google Insights for Search, as I've said before, it gives us uh, trending information over time, and it will also allow me to zero in on country and in the case of Australia, states, and of course, uh, and, and get more local about what the phrases are that have been typed in close to your audience. But here's something you may not have known. If you don't put anything actually in that search box and just click search, you can have a look and see what the big breakout phrases or the big rising phrases are in Google at the moment. I mean, no surprise there. We've got Facebook, YouTube with two words as opposed to one. And YouTube, Gmail, Google, Hotmail, new Hotmail. I'm surprised Hotmail's still up there, actually. And these come from people who can't be asked, basically, of typing in a whole web address. So they'll just type it up here in their search box, or Google will be their default homepage, and they'll just type YouTube or Facebook into Google so they don't have to type in the .com and then click on the result. So interesting stuff. And if you do Australia, for instance without anything in there. We can see there that, you know, some top searches that in Australia, people are interested in lyrics and eBay and the weather, uh, which is very interesting. And I know I'm digressing a little, but stay with me because I want to know who ranks number one for weather. You would think it's the Bureau of Meteorology and it is. That's good. So there you go. And back to Google Insights for Search. Now, 
if you, we'll just have a look at your site, how to present. And let's have a look at some of the key phrases around that. And I've got this in Chrome at the moment, Google Chrome, but I'm going back to Firefox because I've got some things installed in, in Firefox that I don't have in Chrome. How to present, this is your page title. Nice, how to present presentation skills, public speaking. Public speaking, now that's not one that we've had a look at here in this search. So I am going to put that in with this. So presentation skills. And what you're trying to do here is you're trying to find what I call high yield phrases. And I would start off with about five. Now I've had some clients say to me, five, five phrases, that's all you're gonna optimize for? Well, no, they're the stem phrases or the seed phrases that we're going to optimize for. Because, yes, we all want to rank for hundreds of phrases, right? Right. But you can't physically go and optimize a site for hundreds of phrases unless you've got millions of pages of content. So what you do is you say, okay, well, these are the broad areas of interest that our site covers. And, and to give you a for instance... Here's one that we prepared earlier for a plumbing company. Now, once again, we only rank them for five phrases, right? But you can see a whole lot of variations on those phrases. Um, you know, best plumber in Melbourne, we didn't rank them for that phrase. Gas plumbing, we didn't rank them for that phrase. But a lot of SEO work is about signposting your content correctly. It's about cataloging your content correctly so that the search engines can find it and understand what keywords on your site have authority and how they relate to other content on that site. And that's all about internal linking of the site, internal structures of the site, those sorts of things, and making sure that your site is giving the right message for Google. So if you optimize properly for five key phrases or thereabouts, you might even just want to do three you will find that because of the other content that you have on your site, and this assumes you do have other content on your site, then you will start to rank for all of these other things. And, you know, we, we talk about things like um, uh, linking like Wikipedia, linking like a wiki, we say. And if you go and have a look at Wikipedia and how it signposts everything within, if, 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 if it mentions a particular um, topic that it has more information on, it will link to that topic. And that's the sort of thing you should be doing in your own site as well. And that's how you end up ranking for hundreds of phrases. But let's get back here. So presentation skills, how to present. And let's do public speaking as well. Or more specifically, Michelle, I would do public speaking training because public speaking is a little vague and you might rank for it but it might you might be getting the wrong people searching for that phrase you need them to be specific because the more specific that you can be with your keyword selection the better it's going to convert and um, you know the, the better the uh, the quality of visitor to your site this is, sorry, I got distracted by the graph. <laughs> this is interesting. Um, I've done the search here for Australia because presumably that's the area of interest that, that you have. Now, you've said in on your Facebook question, you've used the word Australia and Sydney in the keywords. I wouldn't think that is a phrase that locals are going to type in. The sorts of people who will be typing in a country typically will be people from uh, overseas and they'll be looking for someone within Australia. But locally, Australia doesn't get typed in a lot uh, when for, for locality searches or for geo searches. They, people will tend to type in a, sound, a town like Sydney, Melbourne, whatever. So this is really interesting and not surprising at all that Australian Capital Territory, our nation's capital, uh, is the number one result for how to present because it's full of public servants and politicians. Um, well, it's number one. It's number one for both of those searches, I should say, for how to present. Now, public speaking training, really, in in relation to these other two, 
not that much. So what I then do, down here you'll see you've got search terms, you've got the, where the volume of searches are coming from, but down here we've got the search term, terms themselves, and you'll see there's some, some breakout phrases. Now these are phrases that are trending now, if you like, or recently, that Google is, is, is calling breakout phrases. Um, presentation skills training is an interesting one because it's appearing twice and there is no presentation skills training, presentation skills training. And what I'm looking for here is spelling differences and there are none. So it's interesting that Google's put that there. Presentation skills course is an interesting one and it's here again, which means... But, you know, the big one at the moment, according to uh, Google, is how to present. And you're in luck here, too. I mean, um, you know, Sydney, New South Wales, we've got really high volume for that how to present. Present value, present food, net present value. Uh, not a good phrase. The reason I say that is that the related phrases to this are <laughs> actually not related. They've got nothing to do with that topic. So then what I go and do, and that gives us a start, and then what I would go and do to cross-check, I'll go to your Google toolbar or just go to Google itself. I sounded a bit like David Koch then, didn't I? 